Greetings. Uh, today we're going to go over LiveBinder. This is a website um, that's very easy to use. Um, there's not a lot of bells and whistles, but what it's used for is creating an interactive binder, electronic binder essentially, of resources for your students, or your students can create their own interactive notebook or interactive binder. Um, so first you'd want to go to the website, LiveBinder.com. There's a tab um, with some suggestions for uh, how you could use this in an education context. I've usually usually seen LiveBinder um, used during professional development and given to teachers um, with a list of different resources or collection rather of different resources, but you could also have students create their own portfolios if you want to, and I'll show you how. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to sign up using our universal login. So that's your OCPS Google login credentials. Um, I already have an account, so it's prompting me to log in, not to create a new account. Um, and then this is really uh, pretty straightforward. So um, if you want to create a new binder, you just click on new binder. And um, what I what I found that this is very useful for is creating text sets or collections of resources for students that's all organized under one convenient link. So um, I'm going to show you an example. I'm going to create a document set for the Panama Canal, which is a U.S. history um, 11th grade uh, Florida social study standard. So we're going to call this Panama Canal document set. Um, and it's a collection of documents relevant to the study of the Panama Canal. And then you can make your binder public and then all you have to do is create a link or if you want it to be private so only you and your students can see your binder you'll still have to create a link but you can add an access key so I'm going to add the access key Panama and then I'm going to create a new binder all right um, so as you see the interactive binder sort of follows the same example as a paper binder you have different tabs like you would tab a binder and then um, you can also create sub tabs under each tab. If you want to delete a tab or a sub tab, you click on, let me close this, you click on this little red arrow and then you click delete and then the tab's gone. If you want to rename a tab, all you have to do is type on it and then uh, name your tab. So the first resource I'm going to use, which I already have pulled up, um, is a Panama Canal map. So I'm going to title this Panama Canal Map. Um, and I already have this resource already loaded. So I'm going to copy and paste the link. Click Insert. And the, when the students load this live binder, they're going to see it embedded, see the link embedded, just like we see this preview, just like you see here which is nice. So they're not just going to see the link, they're also going to see a preview of the website. And then they can follow the link and go directly to the website or they can access this website from the live binder without leaving this, uh, the live binder site. All right, now I'm going to uh, create another tab and um, I'm going to link to a text document. This is from Gilder Lehrman and um, this is a document of uh, the Panama Canal proposal. back when Ulysses S. Grant proposed the Panama Canal. So I'm going to, um, again, link the URL and click Insert. It looks like it's taking a minute to load. Um, and I'm going to title it Panama Canal Proposal. And if it takes a little while to load, your students can always click on Go to this site and then that'll open a new tab in their browser and it'll take them right to the website where you want them to go. And then um, I'm gonna add a third source. I'm gonna add a link to, you know, instead of adding a link to this text set, I'm going to select a specific um, item from this text set. I'm going to link to a, to a photograph of the construction of the Panama Canal. 
So I'm going to add that URL right here. Click insert. And then there's that preview. So for some reason, this website, the Gilder Lehrman website, doesn't want to generate a preview, and that's fine because uh, students can still go to the website by clicking go to site. Um, and then I'm going to title this one uh, photograph. So I've run out of tabs here. I can create a new tab by going to uh, this button right here and clicking tab. Um, if I've created too many tabs, I just click the red arrow and then click delete. You can also change the order of the tabs. So by clicking on the red arrow, you can move the tab to the left. You can move it to the right, depending on what order you want it to be in. You could copy and paste the tab if you need to. Um, so in this last uh, little tab, I'm going to add a Padlet for my students to complete. Um, so I have a Padlet that I've already set up. I'm going to copy and paste the link. So this is going to be an interactive website for my students. And your students can interact. They can interact with Padlet, or if it's another interactive website, they can interact with it through LiveBinder. So as you can see here in this little preview, they can add their comments to, to Padlet, they can access it, they can see it, they can change it. But it's uh, the benefit of using LiveBinder is it's all in one place. Well, now that I have my text set all set up, my Panama Canal document set, I want to save this with my students. Well, I want to share it with my students, so I'm going to click Save so my work isn't gone. <laughs> and um, I'm going to click Share. And here's my link. And I can copy and paste this link wherever I want. I could add it to Canvas. If I want students to go directly to the Live Binder, I could post it on my, um, on my whiteboard and have them follow the link. Um, and uh, this is very easy for students to use as well. So if you want students to create their own text set, or if you want to say, have students show you various examples of Byzantine art, or find two examples of Roman art, two examples of Greek art, or um, collect any kind of um, number of different items from the web, or they can embed their own items so they can create Google documents and embed them in a live binder. So if you want your students to create their own interactive digital portfolios, they can do this as well. Um, as you can see, it's very easy to use. And the way that they would submit their work to you would be by creating a link by hitting share. So I'll do that again. They'll click share, and then they'll copy and paste this link, um, and then submit it on Canvas to you. All right, uh, and that's it.